Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Oh, no, oh, no. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Hey, yep. First half, uh, I thought we played really well. Um, offensively, we were hitting on all cylinders. It was about as good as we've played offensively from the standpoint of taking care of the ball, transition offense, execution, shot making, getting to the free throw line in concert with the shot making. Uh, I, I just thought we did some good things. Defensively, I was really encouraged. I thought we were much better than uh, than how we played defensively in the Appalachian State game in the first half here uh, this afternoon. Now, now, the second half was a different story. I thought, you know, we challenged them to come out, and we still haven't figured that out yet. We, I didn't think we came out very well. We missed layups. We gave up layups. Thought we were sloppy with the ball. We missed layups ourselves. As I said, a four or five of them, I thought, were in and around the rim. And you may miss one. Sometimes stuff happens, those point blankers. But you got to find a way to make three out of four of those. As we know in college basketball, point blank layups are hard to get. And so we just we missed too many of those. I didn't think our focus was razor, laser sharp in the second half at either end of the floor. Um, felt like we just mucked around a little bit. Uh, fortunately, we, we uh, you know, were able to win the game, have an opportunity to learn from it. But you know, right now, we've, we've played eight games. And uh, the thing that's most concerning for me or area of improvement is just our consistency with our defense, uh, our consistency with our attention to details, you know, at both ends of the floor. We've played some good basketball at times, certainly, and I don't want to take that away from our guys, but we just need to be a lot more consistent in what we're doing. Emmanuel with a career high six blocks. He's the first player to do that since Zeke Marshall, you said 2013. 2013. He's a guy you saw, obviously, in the magazine, Marshall. What have you seen out of Emmanuel as he continues to vote? Well, he continues to get better. And he'll tell you, he's a work in progress. You know, for him, Dan, some of these guys, you know, those guys didn't even get in every game last year. Not all of them. Now, most of them they did. But none of none of the E-Man and Dan, neither guy, averaged double-figure minutes on the season. So that this is a new deal for them, new role on a new team and a different style of play. Um, and I, I just think Manny's one of those guys that's just continued to get better and better and better. Uh, he's a really good person and a great teammate. And I think he's starting to learn the value of what you put into something is, is how you get something good in return back, um, meaning work. You know, there's no substitute for work. Well, obviously, we've seen that uh, with Dan, you told me. John, again, with the sharing the basketball, 15 assists out of 20 with 28 field goals, it has to be good. And building some of that with the team as you go as you go along. Yeah, no question. Um, I, I thought in the first half we were really good with that. In the second half, not maybe quite as good, but um, you know we'll build on it. Um, I, I like our guys. I think they they're learning how to be unselfish and trust one another. We have multiple shot makers out there, Evan. That is one of the strengths of our team. And so if we'll move that ball, you know a lot of times. You know, whether it's uh, Jamon, Dan, Malcolm, you know, Vershawn, Torrey makes a three tonight, EP's capable. You know, all of a sudden that ball starts zipping around. We got multiple shot makers out there. It makes us difficult to defend. How big is this trip to Hawaii? You, yes, you've had, but you know, like one day and go home on your two road games, the Dane and to Marshall. You're going to spend about, the team's going to spend about two or three days. Is that a good thing to just maybe get yourself together as a family and get everything ready to get it to Mac play as we get, when you come back, it'll be pretty much time to start with the Western Michigan game. Yeah, it's a big trip for us, Evan, I think. And, and you're exactly right. You know, a lot of people look at it in terms of who we're playing, the quality of the field, the event, and certainly that's a part of it. But the other part of this is we get to spend six, seven days together on, off the court, uh, you know, we can, I think, accelerate or build even more our team chemistry, um, you know, the relationships that we have, because this is really what's, that's what it's about. And so I think that gives us an opportunity to do that, because we're going to be around each other, you know, quite a bit here over the next six, seven days, obviously, before we return uh, back home. You guys see you Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, when do you guys leave? We leave on the 19th. And you return home when? On the 26th. Obviously, it's a business trip, but... 
you're going to have some fun, right? Again. Well, um, I, I hope our families and certainly um, believe our president, um, who's an unbelievable supporter, he and his family are coming. We've got some other uh, fans that are coming. Uh, and so that'll be great. Have a good time, and I hope our families have a great time. You know, for me, it'll be all business. Three games in four days, getting our team prepared. We will take time on the day off, just because I've done it once before. And I just think it's such a powerful experience to go over and visit Pearl Harbor. So we'll do that on the day off, and I think it's great for our players. Gives them great perspective. Um, and for me, it's really special. You know, my dad was in the 101st Airborne in Vietnam, and my grandparents were in World War II, and so there's very you know, few things that are as near and dear to my heart as you know, our military, our armed services, our armed forces, our veterans, and what those people sacrifice. And you know, as you're out there, and I did it once before, I've had a chance to be there once, and Normandy Beach once, and it's two of the greatest experiences that I've ever had and so I'm hoping our players feel the same way and get a chance to experience that there on our day off will be really special. How recent were those trips? Oh gosh, uh, Pearl Harbor was 2012, um, Normandy Beach was the summer of uh, 15. John, when the, the coach at USC, didn't he come from uh, Florida Gulf Coast, isn't it? He did, did a great job there. He's doing a great job at USC. Yep. Yeah, and he's done a great job recruiting, does a great job with his program. They've continued to get uh, better and better each year that he's been there, and, and uh, to no surprise. And, you know, it'd be a great challenge. Obviously, I don't know a ton about him at this point. I will as soon as the game's over, I get a folder here shortly. But I know they have great size. I know they're going to play really hard. Um, I know they're going to be very athletic. And, um, you know, Andy will have them ready to play. So it'll be, it'll be a great challenge for us and, you know, one that we're looking forward to. Weren't they, weren't they at the start of the season in the top 25, if you, if you know? I think so, Evan. You'd have to check on yeah. that. I'm really bad when it comes to anybody other than our team, who we're playing, and the guys that are in our coaching family. I follow those guys uh, pretty closely and root for those guys. But other than that, that's, that's about it. Okay. With uh, Daniel, what have you seen out of him since you took the job to now? Where has he improved the most? Yeah, a lot. Just multiple areas. Commitment. Okay. His commitment. Not that he wasn't committed before, but his uh, he's experiencing. Um, you know, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier. He's putting a lot in, so he's getting a lot out. You know, he, from his body to. I think he values sleep now more than he ever has. He values eating, hydrating. You know, uh, taking care of his body. Uh, treatment, rehab, skill instruction, getting shots on off days. Like he, he, he operates from a mental perspective very similar to how a pro operates, to be honest. And that's why he's played, in my opinion, well, I mean, he's perfect and he's still got some things he's working on. He's a work in progress, but, you know, he's certainly made a lot of strides. I mean, uh, coaches always talk about how we need to start the second half more with more effort and just play harder, but. I mean, after that little run that they had, we uh, we just buckled down and just try to get stops. Same. Go ahead, Emmanuel. You had uh, I believe six blocks tonight. Um, you were like seemed to disrupt them both offensively and defensively. Uh -huh. What was your mindset coming in against an opponent that's traveled quite a bit that they've lost quite a bit? What was your mindset coming in as an individual as a team? Oh, uh, we were just trying to come in and play hard. You know, we know they're having a tough season right now, so we just. I have to come in, play as hard as we can, and just to get them out the gym. Is that a career high for you? Six? So yeah, six. it is. Malcolm, okay. mm -hmm. you got hot again in the second yes, half, uh, especially from the top of the key and also from the right. I think you pull up the right corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miles, right wing, I think. Uh, it seems like when they need, when you need a big one, it's, it's come down to you most mm -hmm. of the time. Can you talk about uh, not only today, but during these three mm -hmm. games at home, I mean, it's. Uh... Um, you know, I just I'm just trying to be the leader of the team, you know. So whenever we need a, a bucket, you know, coaches gave me that responsibility, you know, to get us going both on the defensive end and on the offensive end. So, you know, that that's just something that just came with experience, you know. I I, I, I really you know relish in those type of moments. So, I'm just trying to, you know, it's just pretty much just that's something I've always been good at. So I'm just trying to you know play to my strengths and you know do whatever to help the team win. The next level is. Getting to do this away from home. Yeah. You're going out to warmth, to yeah. Hawaii, and facing and the start of the, the diamond head against a very good USC team. You 
talk about that either, any of you? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm coming from the Pac-12, so, you know, I have a lot of experience against playing against USC, you know, we know they're an athletic team, so, but, you know, it really comes down to us, you know, playing our game and, you know, living up to our standards and what we, you know, what we stand for every single game, so, you know, so we just got to keep getting better as a team, and I think if we come out and really, you know, execute the way we're supposed to be, and I think, you know, we're going to, you know, every game I go into that we're going to win, so I don't really look at the opponent at any different than anyone else, so it's really how we prepare and, you know, get ready to fight. Would you like to... Build, are you want to build some momentum because when you come back, it's pretty much the start of MAC play. Uh, has to to you, Malcolm? Has yeah. uh, Daniel and Emmanuel and Shaman told you yet what it's like to play a Mid America? I know you played in the Pac-12 yeah. and you played some great teams: UCLA, Oregon, or mm -hmm. UCLA, Oregon, Arizona State. This is almost. Have you been told about how? tough this conference is sometimes? Oh yeah, no, I definitely respect the conference and you know, the teams that are in it. Like there's always been a competitive edge of telling me about the, you know, little rivalries with different teams and stuff like that. But you know, every time I put on the Akron jerky, jersey, that's the team I play for. Yeah. So you know, I give it, I give it my 100 for that team. So against whoever we play, if we're playing against, you know, the, like Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm still gonna, you know, play my 100% for, you know, my teammates and my coaches. Because I remember you last year with, or with Oregon yeah. State when you played Kent. Uh, in no, actually, I wasn't playing last year. So, you playing last nah, year, nah, last year was my rest year. Yeah, they did the play them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For uh, for Daniel and Emmanuel, still adjusting with new guards. You know, a lot of guys transferred out, some new young players, including uh, Malcolm. What's it been like for you two guys adjusting to new players on the perimeter? You know, <laughs> uh, for me, really, it's been an easy adjust. Like they play hard, they share the ball, so. It's really basically the same thing for me. Yeah, pretty smooth. Yeah, pretty smooth for me, like especially with Malk. You know, Malk is an amazing teammate. You know, he wants us to basically score the ball. He looks he looks for us every time. I mean, he can also score the ball, so it's pretty amazing having these new teammates. Okay. Do you still guys, do you guys keep in touch with the guys that left? Not so much? Yeah, we, I, yeah, we still keep in touch. A little bit. Yeah. Still family. Yeah.